We're going to take a few moments and we're going to explore a very important concept related to our next couple of topics. Unfortunately, the terminology used here is often misused in the world of music and music technology. So we want to take a few moments and make sure that we've established the use of these terms so that we can clearly and correctly speak about these acoustic phenomena. So phase will be defined as the fraction of a waveform that has elapsed relative to the origin. We want to make sure that we do not confuse the term phase with polarity. The reason that these are different in real-world applications is that real-world sounds have duration. They start at a particular point in time, and they end at a particular point in time. Why does that matter? When we take a sound wave that starts at a particular point in time, goes positive, then goes negative, a change in polarity of this would simply swap positive values for negative values and negative values for positive values. In other words, this shape would be a mirror of itself around the x-axis. We would see a shape going negative, then going positive, but following this exact same contour. A phase shift of 180 degrees would actually represent moving this waveform by half a cycle. Now, we can see that from here, we would actually get the same thing as if we had done a polarity flip. But in this first portion of the waveform, a phase shift is going to produce a very different response than a polarity flip. A polarity flip has the negative values and then goes positive. A phase shift of 180 degrees simply moved the entire waveform to start here. So we don't want to confuse this term with polarity. And by the end of the next section of this video, you should be able to answer why a phase shift is different than polarity in real-world audio applications. So let's take a moment and let's talk about phase. Phase comes from the idea of representing cyclic processes with an arc traveling around a circle. So if we imagine that we're going to have an arc that travels around this circle counterclockwise. And at any moment in time, we represent the instantaneous value. On a graph, what we'd find is that a consistently moving line along the edge of this circle would give us a sine wave. So the terminology for phase comes from the angles on a Cartesian graph. So with a waveform that starts at zero, and moves positive, we would expect to see counterclockwise rotation. We would call the maximum point, the maximum amplitude of, the, of this part of the waveform, the 90 degree point. We would find that we reach zero again at 180 degrees. We reach our maximum negative value at 270 degrees, and we've returned to zero at 360 degrees where we begin the cycle. So, we discuss the phase of a sound wave in terms of angles, and we're simply referring to how far we've gone on the timeline. In other words, talking about the phase of a sound wave is just telling us we're at this point, or we're at this point, or we're at this point. It doesn't specify any change in the actual waveform at all. A related concept that's often confused is phase shift. Phase shift is measured in degrees, can also be measured in a unit called radians. If you recall from your geometry, we can measure angles around a circle in a unit called radians. The radian represents everything in multiples of pi. So one full rotation would be two pi radians. Phase shift is measured in degrees or radians and refers to the time delay of a signal or the difference between two or more like waveforms. So in this graph, we can see that we have this red waveform. And we can see that we have an identical shape, the blue waveform, if we assume that this red waveform has been shifted by some amount on the time axis. In other words, it's been delayed. We might get this blue shape. And the amount of time that we've shifted that waveform or delayed it would be called the phase shift. Now, how does phase shift occur in the real world? One of the most important ways that phase shift occurs in the real world has to do with the propagation of sound. When sound starts from a particular location, 
and travels directly through the air to another location, we get what might be represented as the red shape. When that same sound reflects off another surface and then arrives at our listening position, but took a longer path, traveled a greater distance, it took longer for it to arrive at our position. So we might end up with a very similar waveform that simply arrives later in time. And we might describe that difference as a phase shift. We'll find there's a lot of other circumstances where phase shifts occur, but at this point, the important thing is to understand that a phase shift involves taking one sound wave and delaying it by some amount of time. Now, when many people use the word phase, what they're really referring to is phase interference. So when you hear somebody say, I think you've got a phase problem, we should probably take a moment and translate in our head to, you have a phase interference problem. So at the core of phase interference is a concept called the principle of superposition. No matter how many sound sources we have in a room, no matter how many different frequencies are happening at one time, at any given point in space, there can only be one air pressure. So what this means is that these various sound sources and the varying levels of sound pressure that they're producing ultimately all add together at any particular point in space. This leads us to the concept of phase interference. So phase interference is when two or more waves at the same frequency interact. Phase interference can be constructive or destructive. And what does this mean? Well, here are some extreme examples. So in this first example on the left side of the screen, we can see two identical waveforms. There is no phase shift. We would say that they are in phase and they have completely constructive phase interference. The way that these two sound waves have interfered is by increasing the total resultant amplitude. In other words, if we had two sound sources producing this frequency and they arrived at another point in space in phase, we might measure this amplitude, which is greater than the amplitude of either of the sound waves. On the other hand, on the right side of the screen, we could see a 180 degree phase shift. This could also potentially happen if the original polarity was flipped. Now in this case, because every point going positive, producing a pressure level greater than the ambient air pressure, is exactly the same magnitude, but the opposite sign of this waveform, they interact destructively. And the result of this type of phase shift or a polarity shift is that we can get complete destructive interference. And the end result might be that we don't measure any pressure changes at all. Now in real world terms, we often don't get completely constructive or completely destructive phase interference. So we can see here two graphs on the left that represent two different waveforms. A sine wave on the top graph and a sine wave that's been shifted by one quarter of a wavelength or by 90 degrees. Here we can see the result of adding those two sound waves together. The result is that we get neither complete destructive or complete constructive interference. 